Hello YouTube, today I am here with a very special guest, Miss Heidi, who runs the Women of Paris tours and they are these amazing tours where you walk around Paris and you discover historical moments and, and times that Paris has really changed and been shaped but really focused on the women who have changed the face of history. The reason I do so is because I felt that women have been overlooked. You generally hear a lot about Napoleon, but not so much about the woman I'm gonna to talk to you about today. If you are interested in taking one of these tours, you can find my website is womenofparis.fr. Uh, you can also follow on Instagram, Women of Paris, Twitter, Women of Paris, and oh. on Facebook, it's Women of Paris Walk. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was just blown away by her knowledge of these magnificent women who have shaped the history of France, who we hear very little about. And so we wanted to do a video today on French women who have made a huge impact on Paris, on France in general, and on the world actually, that you may never have heard of. You probably haven't heard of, but need to know. Yeah. So the first woman I want to talk to you about today is Olympe de Gouges, mm. uh, who has one of the best names in history already. Yeah. Olympe de Gouges was a writer, and she was essentially the first um, female women's rights activist in France. She was really a self-taught, self-made noblewoman. She stole that name, it wasn't uh, the name that she was born with. Mm. Uh, de Gouges makes her sound more yeah. uh, aristocratic. She taught herself, basically educated herself, and um, she was around in the revolution, uh, the French Revolution in the uh, le late 18th century. And she's famous for her writing and specifically for writing uh, the Declaration of the Rights of Women and the Citizen. Oh, wow. Uh, the female citizen, I should say, because uh, Lafayette uh, had written a Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen, uh, which unfortunately neglected to talk about the rights of women. Uh, and so as a parody, she, she wrote this. Uh, unfortunately though, Olympe de Gouges um, wasn't well liked for her, for her writings okay. and uh, she eventually ended up uh, on the guillotine. Wow. Uh, so she was, yeah, uh, one of the first female activists, if not the first women's rights activist in France. Um, who unfortunately was a bit too ahead of her time. Right. <laughs> I guess. And, and they solved that problem pretty quickly. Yeah. I guess she was taking huge risks. Yes, she was, and she was also writing not only about the rights of women, but about abolition of slavery. Mm. Um, she was very much in favor of a welfare state and democracy. All of this hard work that she was doing before her untimely death, mm. did anything ever come of that? Yeah, I mean, eventually, uh, and thanks to the women's liberation movement, uh, which started in France uh, really in 1968, mm -hmm. uh, officially known as the Mouvement de Libération des Femmes, mm -hmm. um, but of course women's suffrage came before that. Um, crazily though, women did not attain full legal rights with, with men in this country in France until 1970. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and some of the biggest and best feminists have been French. Yes, so it's 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 interesting that they're often far, they're often just a few steps behind, um, sort of European counterparts or you know the UK or the US. Um, wasn't New Zealand the first country to give women the vote? Yes, proudly. Yes, high <laughs> five. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the next woman I want to talk to you about, um, she was a contemporary of Olympe de Gouges. Um, her name was Germaine de Stahl. Germaine de Stahl was an 18th century writer, novelist, and salon host. And she was a 19th century fugitive and highly influential figure. She was very much in a similar way. She was a, she was a, uh, she was a believer in women's rights. Uh, she was an incredibly intelligent woman, but she was a lot more pragmatic than Olympe de Gouges. She recognized that there are some things that she, she shouldn't and couldn't say. Right. Um, but nonetheless, she still managed to get her voice heard. Let me just tell you a little bit about her. Um, she was the daughter of Necker, a very, very um, successful and popular finance minister of Louis the, the 16th. Mm -hmm. um, and she was the daughter of a very famous and well-liked salon host. Okay. Um, so salons, 
originated in France in the 1600s and they were informal meetings um, hosted by women, so prominent women in society. Um, and they were meetings of intellectuals, so you had writers, philosophers, the great thinkers of, of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and it was also a way for, for these women who hosted them to gain an informal education. Okay. Um, so her mother was a salon host, and from a young age she was taken to the salon, she would sit at her mother's feet, and she would hear these uh, incredible intellectuals talking about mm. politics and art. So she grew up with a very open education, mm. an education that, that far surpassed what was expected of women at the time. Of course. And she also hosted her own uh, salon. Um, but during the revolution, her and her family um, were pretty much in exile um, in Switzerland. And then she was also a bit of a fugitive during the time of Napoleon Bonaparte. And uh, I love this quote, Napoleon apparently only recognized three powers in Europe, um, Russia, Great Britain, and Germaine de Stahl. Um, <laughs> they were opposed in almost everything. Um, so Napoleon was an imperial emperor who believed in, in spreading the, the, the culture uh, of France throughout his impoverished uh, mm -hmm. European nations. Uh, whereas she believed that there was a lot to be learnt from Europe uh, and, sh and she wanted to have an education of, of German playwrights, for example, or, or of Russian uh, music. They also differed uh, in terms of how they viewed religion. So Germaine de Stahl was a Protestant and Napoleon is famous for uh, his segregation of church and state, um, famously actually taking the crown from the Pope's hands and putting it on, on his own head at Notre Dame. Uh, what a guy. Like. Yeah. <laughs> but he definitely believed that women should kind of be seen and not heard. Um, right. You know, he didn't he didn't really permit women to have a voice in society. Um, but Germaine de Star was unstoppable and she managed to be an incredibly influential writer mm -hmm. uh, despite being in exile, influential in politics. Um, despite the fact that women were denied any access to politics. So in terms of her long-term legacy, um, she was influential in bringing about uh, political change in France and in Europe. And she was also an inspiration to great thinkers and writers like Tolstoy and uh, Marcel Proust. Right. And so for the last little teaser of these incredible women who have impacted French society, who do you have for us? Georges Sand. Um, George? George Sand. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't her real name. Her real name was Lucille Amandine Aurore Dupin, like Aurora. Um, although uh, when she was a naughty child, she was known as L'Horreur, <laughs> the horror. And she was a writer, she was a, a novelist, she also wrote plays, and she was a journalist. Uh, but most of all, she was a badass. So she was born in 1804. She was actually born the same year that Napoleon seized that crown out of the Pope's hands and placed it on his own head and <laughs> crowned himself. Um, and she was born into, therefore, a very turbulent century in France. The 19th century saw a lot of change. Uh, and in fact, the government in France was changing um, every few decades, almost as you know, frequently as a Frenchman changes his underwear. Is that often? <laughs> <laughs> Is it even that often? After her first marriage breaks down, um, she didn't ever get remarried, but she had several lovers, often very high profile lovers. And she um, dressed up in society as a man in order to go around and live a free existence wow. and go to places that women couldn't go to. <gasps> Um, to be more comfortable, else. of course, because the corset was, I can imagine, pretty restrictive to yeah, say the least. Like, yeah, the struggle is real. Yeah. She was just a big rebel. I mean, um, she also was an incredibly successful writer as well. Um, so she is uh, France's second best selling writer after Victor Hugo. Wow. Um, and she was incredibly prolific. She published 80 novels, something like 120 plays, and uh, thousands of her letters have also been published, Wow! Uh, which give you an insight into 
her her her, her lifestyle. So she was smart. She was sassy. She had she a- was super sassy. Yeah. She was also writing pretty like sexually explicit novels, um, and so in a way that linked to her her lifestyle. And I think that was something that made her so so attractive and, and popular. She was like a player and a cougar. <laughs> Let me just say that. Um, at the time that she was cross-dressing, it was illegal. But she managed to get around that by getting um, like a written permission from the French police, which she could take with her and show to people that would allow her to legally cross-dress. So, so what's her legacy then to this day? So really, she led a very shocking, rebellious lifestyle. And she, in that way, embodies this sexual liberalism that okay. France is, is known for today. Mm. She, she helped women to break free of those restrictive shackles like having to wear that kind of feminine clothing of the time and made it more acceptable mm. for women to to behave like that and to dress like that and this is just a tiny tiny little insight into all the things that Heidi knows about the amazing badass rebellious women that have walked these streets if you can come and do her tour because that's when you'll really have your eyes opened or recommend it to some friends because it's definitely worth it 10 out of 10 would recommend so i a post written about you recently and they said you know the future is female which is very much the case the future is female but not just that the past is too the past was also female mm-hmm. Woo! <laughs> girl power girl power <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed that video and until the next one see you next time a bientôt Bye.